Alright, that was kind of the, the basic main skylight, and this is the perimeter of the skylight. Um, probably should preface all this by going, what you received in the first delivery is just the frame, all of the aluminum frames, and I saw they they packed all the insulation on it so you could try to keep that attached to the building. Um, but none of the sheet metals come, none of the gutters, none of the caps. Okay, I hope they sent you the glass tops. Um, <laughs> Please check the glass tops to make sure it's there. It's a complicated skylight. It's taken a long time to get it ready. Um, so I think everything you're going to get should be all you need to do the frame. We talked about the middle of the frame. Uh, the second shipment you're going to get is going to be gutters and snap caps, which would let you do a lot of the glazing. Because um, then by then you'll do all the flashing joints that we talked about here. Um, put the glass in and be in pretty good shape and then the perimeter panels and flashing I believe all can be done after that is complete but take a good look at it I could be wrong that's what I tried to do but you know how it is when I do stuff so be careful um, so we have the the west side that's probably the trickiest part I'm gonna start over here on the, the top and the bottom that's more straightforward and then the, those two have to connect around this east corner where we have to wrap around this these two curving corners um, one thing to remember is our rafters do not align with the curtain wall mullions they are very close but they have five feet going this way and we're at a different angle they come out pretty close I don't think people will notice different um, but it was decided everybody knows that they are not perfectly aligned or at least they should um, it's not hidden anywhere that they're not so um, so let's go to the upper which is page 11 so these rafters at the ridge um, they stand up straight they're plumb on the side they have a support and here you can see the T extending and down below would be where our plates would extend and then there's a tube that runs there our rafter should be centered on that tube if it varies a little bit that'll be okay we have room to take adjustment out here um, so page 11 is good it's a little bit different to the grids and then you want to make sure the studs happen they should be waiting to do studs until you guys are doing frame or at least are there and can talk to them this gets tricky we want the studs to be nine inches above this steel and then to step down where the gutters come through so they have to do a little pocket at the end of each gutter that'll take a lot of coordination um, and we thought it was best if they do the studs after you guys start the frame that means they're going to spray EFIS after you've started the frame as well. So that's another thing to watch. We should probably look for some plastic and try to wrap our frame. We certainly don't want to do glass until they've sprayed the EFIS. None of this flashing should go on either. Um, just needs to be watched. Uh, they have a layout for the studs, and that is way back on 2D. This tells them where to put it going that way. These are the dimensions. Grid line E is the, is that north? And grid line C is the south. And then we gave them a layout to bend it around this edge that matched with the steel. Then the EFIS is applied to that. Um, so here's the detail on that side. They should get it in the right spot. Um, but it, you should watch it as it's happening. It's a point of close coordination to make everything work. All right. Then you'll have <clears throat> this flashing just counters over the EFIS. I think you could slip that in later. This flashing on the inside is odd. Um, it's got a little bend to it here. Let's zoom in a little bit. You guys are going to hate me for what I've done to you. But at the ridge, our rafter is up here. 
and this flashing works like that and it's got a little bit of a bend in at this corner and as you pull this 12 foot long piece of flashing towards the gutter push it down which will push this corner over and I don't think it's going to hurt anything and it should flex easily the little two inches it has to flex but you're going to basically warp it to go into the gutter where your panel is at this height and then let it kind of spring up as you get to the ridge um, I think it'll work uh, you guys let me know I if it doesn't work we have something we need to talk about when it's on here then take the flashing tape that we sent and tape it up and over the the filler bar and yeah we're getting kind of rain screeny with how we're building this but we thought we would give that a try when the flashing is here and then later on when you put this track in then we want to do flashing tape over that as well so that's going to make this all just one big airtight pocket you know to back everything up so you're probably going to need the panels to set this in the right place um, so that you can just drop it in later and you're going to anchor it here through these seal up the screws good you've got shims of different heights and then screws every 24 inches you're going to caulk underneath here after you put this flashing in and then this panel is going to go last you're going to drill and tap the channel but you have the countersinks for reference as to where to put them um, so that's the basic idea of the perimeter coordinate the studs flex the flashing tape the joints you know and after you have the track in and then put the panels over the outside um, same thing it, this is just drawn for us one's a valley one's a hip but it's so tiny it doesn't affect you this is the end of the gutter this is where it gets pretty hairy most of these drawings affect us in the shop and the production guys what you need to know is that there's these boxes that are about 8 by 18 at the end of each gutter and if you look here that's the inner liner that we talked about before with the notches to go around the rafter it lays overlays a little ledge in the box and it's going to weep into the box so that's the inner layer draining into the box this part catches the outer layer so that's the outer gutter coming through with your insulation doing this and what we're trying to do is make it th as thermally broken as we could this part here that you see that's shaded it's sort of a collar to grab the end of the liner and then fasten to the box it, you'll see it as you work through it it's difficult to um, to show on a drawing without it just being overwhelming it shouldn't be too bad for you guys to get an idea of what you're looking at um, let me see I've got a picture here this is one of the boxes made here's the inner shelf where your inner liner is going to come through and then it's welded up this shape matches what we just looked at on page 11 so you're going to bring your 11 in and butt it up to here and there's a cover piece that gets set and sealant on top this is where your insulation is going to sit on and then your outer liner will come through and yeah it just spits the water right onto the roof I think there's enough room that you can get into the box and wipe sealant on the inside of any welded seams um, a lot of new welders so please make sure you back up every welded joint with sealant um, we don't want a pinhole in there because it's going to be really hard to track it down later and figure out what's going on so that's a box these drawings are intimidating more so for the shop you just have to bolt them to the frame they're all made to bolt right up to the other crossbars and then they sit and here's the, the pocket in the stud previously we were nine inches above the steel tube so you have to look at this drawing closely 
Here's the tube that we looked at on page 11. It's down here. There's posts at the end of each truss. They come up to the height of the plate or the height of the ridge, depending where you're at, and they have a square plate on it to hold our support. Or in the case of the bridge, it's a T coming across to the same point. And so the stud is nine inches above there, and then when it gets to the gutter box, it's got to step down to be even with the top of the plate. And then this box is basically hanging off the crossbars. If Peter sent you plastic shims like he usually does, put some underneath here to carry the weight. But it's just sitting on them. It doesn't have to do anything else. Um, you don't have to drill any holes to screw it down to the stud. I think just something to sit on. Maybe caulk the inside if you can reach it. Um, and then we'll go from there. Let's zoom in a little bit. There's a lot going on. Here's your grating coming across. It's got a little bearing bar. This is your gutter liner, your gutter. Here's that collar I told you about. So that pop rivets onto the end of the liner and gives it some heavier metal that it can be fastened to the box. But it's fastened sort of outside and then we're trying to insulate it and just limit the metal that can carry cold back in. But if this stuff would sweat, it'll get caught in the box and weeped out. Uh, I think there's only one screw to hold these little fascia covers on. And hopefully that will be enough. Uh, they're kind of hidden. Um, it'll take you a little bit of time to work through this. Here's our track from Detail 11. Here's our flashing flex down to the bar. Here's the panel, which is going to end up flush with the gutter. Um, here's the strap that holds the insulation, that holds the liner. Here's our little inner pieces that are really now cut tighter to the uh, supports. Let's see what the next page has for you. Here, here's the box where it's taller. Here's the crossbar welded to the box to a plate that's bolted back into the frame. Here's our flexed flashing kind of fitting. We're going to wrap it with tape. Wrap it with tape into the box. There's sort of a hole right here so that this could drain if it needed to. Um, it's just kind of a weird, when you look at the box, it doesn't make much sense, but it does eventually close everything off. If we miss something, by all means, try to fix it with the flashing tape. At the box, there should be a hole that's going to weep this track into the box. And then we've taken the box and we've put a tap for a pipe tap in here. And then you should have some little short pipe nipples that you can wrap with Teflon thread and screw into there. Uh, let me know if that doesn't work and we'll have to do something else. Um, but that was the idea to actually screw the weep hole in and have it be a piece of metal, not a piece of plastic tubing. Um, but this is the first time for this, so what, let's talk about it as you get there and see how that's working out. I think this is getting to be an elevation. Here's our studs, nine inches above the tube. Comes down a little height, then goes back over. So this is what the metal stud guy has to coordinate, and then his ephus has to do this same deal and then your box sits in here. So the gutter just is draining direct and it falls to 12 feet down to the roof. Here's an elevation of the studs, but we didn't want them to do that before our frame was there. Just if they were off, they'd be off everywhere. It'd be a real mess. This is exploded for the shop, not so much for you. And this one is more for you guys. Uh, we're making this corner with the flashing as two, there's a 90 down and a 90 up, and then straight lengths that overlap it. And you can cut those and fit them as needed. Here's the track to the box. There will be a cover in there. Here's the cover. That's the track. It's kind of double drawn. Here's the collar piece that catch, catches the liner and then fastens into the box. Take some time, look at it. It is complicated. 
Uh, but hopefully not too bad for you guys. I think the worst was put in the shop. This is at the east end where um, the layout of the frame didn't cooperate with what we were doing, so there's a lot of odd assemblies of bar. Um, <clears throat> but in general, we're doing the same thing with the flashing and just kind of muscle it in where you need to go. There's some welded joints where two bars kind of make an elbow. Wherever you see an elbow in a crossbar, it needs a little clip tech screwed in and then screwed down. I think actually they turned out to be more of an L shape than this weird Z. So look for the L, and I think it's actually sitting right above the stud. You can just screw it down and screw it into the bar. It's just to keep it from rotating. The detailing here is the same as the other stuff. Um, parts of it are segmented, and parts like on 15 are welded pieces to be curved. Um, but the same basic idea. Uh, the connections underneath are weird. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll come back to those liner things. These are the connections. Again, everything should be shot made. You guys just have a bunch of twisted bars with funny plates on them. And they're all detailed there. Again, we're working from the steel, so I think we're pretty good. Everything should land. These are a lot of taken from their model, and then our connections shoehorned in between everything. It gets a little crowded. Here's the square plate. I told you it wasn't like a big diamond, which would have been simpler. You've got some supports with corners clipped off. I don't even know if you can get that bolt. Try to, but um, you know how it works. This is the corner on the northwest side. And the panels here get a little wild. Um... There's a lot going on. You've got a curtain wall mullion. You've got metal studs turning to line up with the end of the curtain wall. And then there's metal panel coming up and ephus underneath. And it's all got to be coordinated. We'll have to talk with Jordan to get that sorted out. Uh, this one we'll come back to. It's, it's very busy. These details get you pretty close to what you're going to walk into. Um, we'll send you some pictures from the model in the coming weeks as you build out to this. Um, in general, this is your west wall frame, and it sort of dies out. You know, as it tapers down to nothing, it runs into the gutter, then the gutter pulls through. Um, and then from here, we're going to go back to page 10 and do that west wall perimeter. So what you see here, here's the bar at page 10. And then out here somewhere is going to be a metal channel. Or it may have already died off somewhere. I will have to. I think it runs through to here. But let's go back to page 10 and see what it looks like. So page 10 is the curtain wall. And of course. He's fixed this way, but maybe moving up and down a bit. And he has a totally different glazing system than we do. We're moving this way and fixed this way. And our drainage is completely different than his. So there's like no good way to merge the two together when you start doing this rain screen stuff. Um, we have panels that link between them, but because the bars don't align, this edge has different turns than this edge, so the panels are complicated. Let's look at 10A. At the biggest lights of glass, we have a very shallow vertical leg. So as your panels get to the bigger lights of glass um, on the south end, you can fish this panel into this space. But when you go to the taller ones, on 10B, ugh, sorry, you could not fish this panel in. So the panels at the north edge, you have to do from smallest working south so that you can set them 
two feet below and then slide them into position. And you'll have to sequentially keep trying to slide them in. Um, we've got an end plate here and we're hoping you'll be able to, to do it just enough to get this to fall into the rafter in case somebody would step on it. There's a little more vertical support. It's held with sealant here. There's a pan that sits on this channel that's part of the frame. You're anchored with a slot. There's a cover plate to set and sealant. So you want this pan to collect any water, drain it into the crossbar. Then you've got a vertical piece. We're going to figure the taper, but it, it's going to be loose so you can work it as you need. That goes up to the back of the curtain wall system. Then you're going to want to clamp this piece of silicone with this piece of flashing. And you're going to work that and get it all screwed into the system here where it's basically pretty dry. Um, and then leave the rubber kind of hang loose. And you're going to caulk it to the underside of their system. I do not know if these guys understood how we were going to do our stuff. They may have left big gaps in this Z piece that we aren't providing at each of their mullions. If that's the case, let me know right away because somebody's going to have to bridge that because that's where we seal and then they have a barrier. This green line is their weatherproofing. Um, so it's it, we have to make sure that this seal to this rubber to this panel connects to that green seal to here which carries it over to the inside of their glass. So this is how everything gets sealed up at the top. If we don't make sure that that's a good line of barrier, there's going to be leaks later and everybody will be pointing fingers. So once that's assured that we have that green line to that caulk is continuous, whether somehow bridging that piece of metal, we may have to add metal to it or they may have to add, but that's another key point where this thing could fall apart. The rubber is going to hang loose until the panels go in. Then kind of tuck what you can in there so it's got room to move and bring it out just enough. And there's another aluminum piece that you can put on and then screw it down to clamp the rubber off. So all of this should be set and sealant on the panel and then clamped with set and sealant. You want to make sure it's just tight, from not weather tight, but not tight. It's got to move. I don't think it can come out. Uh, it's sort of in there loosely, um, but it's a trick. Let me know how it works. This leg is bearing on the crossbar and then caulked here. Um, I'm hoping it's a practical solution to a difficult problem, um, but I'm counting on a lot of things working that may or may not. Notably, this leg and then having to slide this down the length. I'm just not sure how much you'll be able to, you know, kind of leave the panel a little bit tipped so you can still elevate it an inch, then slide it in and set it into its final place. Um, we may have to clip a little bit of this off and just have less of a foot that stands on it, just so you have more room to kind of wiggle it around. And then it's the same thing here, it just got squished for height. Um, there's an inner piece that's not really doing anything but make sure the batting stays in this cavity. Um, if you need to, take some flashing tape and make something here to just kind of make a little flexible seal so that we don't have batting squeezing out of the cracks. Uh, these fit between the rafters. Uh, Keep an eye that all the rafters have these big plates welded. That's what makes the whole thing work structurally, that these big plates are welded into the notch. So that's your perimeter. Um, that's a lot of stuff. Hope that helps.